I just had 100 Rizal mirror matches in a row, so you don't have to. In this video, I'm going to tell you 10 tips about Rizal I guarantee you don't know. Alright, you probably do know though. But some you won't know, that's a guarantee. Let's go. Before you get inside this video, I want you to go to my setup to tsx1.com and Supreme Pro. Use code TRIFF10 to get 10% off. That's right, there's three YCS champions on Team Supreme Pro. Sam, who's just one. Ha, who's a three-time champion. And I'm the 2024 YCS champion, according to Dueling Book. Even though I, don't, I didn't win one yet. But I will at Anaheim. Let's go. So, in this video, there's 10 tips. Also, one last thing before we go. I realized I purchased the Fire Deck Box on my website, TripGaming.com. I'd like to apologize. I'm sending a refund to everybody. This co The company that got it from really over. But I'm sending a refund to absolutely everyone, so it's coming soon in your account if you didn't get it already. And before we get into this video, I would like to welcome you all to the Rise Hill Masterclass. It will be Thursday, November 28th at 5 p.m. Where I'm going to spend seven hours educating all you, Professor Triff style. Absolutely everything you need to know about the deck is going to be shown in this video but especially the master class we're gonna spend seven hours teaching everything about it so make sure to go sign up so far i have 96 points i'm gonna be teaching you guys and we're gonna be dueling every single person that comes to the master class live i'm gonna be asking every single question you have to prepare you guys for yc centerheim i'm gonna be showing you guys revealing the two deck lists that i've been hiding one of which i'll be using as actually ycs anaheim and it covers six extenders in the deck that nobody knows about that covers what i think is the biggest liability of the deck which is the consistency so make sure to go sign up down below i wanted to make this extremely pricey because i was going to show so much value you could possibly imagine one month's worth of work but i opted not to do that because i love you guys too much and i've been away for so long i was going to price it at 100 dollars per master class but i decided to drop that down to only 33 dollars so make sure you go sign up down below i'm going to be sending a uh, the entire recording to everyone who signs up if you can't make it it'll be thursday november 28th 5 p.m eastern time all right let's get into the video 10 tips on rise Heal, because as i said i did a 100 mirror matches so if i can't there's no one in the world that can tell you more about rise Heal. let's someone just said 100 mirror matches in a row literally 100 i probably actually a lot more than 100 but 100 in the last few days i know i don't have a life so anyways let's get started tip number one tip number one you ready for this it's gonna sound crazy really really this one tip alone will save the whole next six months of torment for you unless you have four hand traps in hand do you hear me unless you have four hand traps in hand or three very good ones do not under any circumstances do not hand trap the level four main deck monsters allow everything to resolve you negate the extra deck monsters you hear me unless it's a simplified game state unless it's a simplified game state let's say for example you just drew five cards okay the opponent goes normal summon ice wars your response if you go veiler what happens next he's gonna go okay a special throw rise heal throw rise heal effect response oh ash if you do that okay go into duo drive dual drive effect uh veiler that's what you veiler you do not like you just wasted three cards to stop one. All right, he still has three cards left. A simple bonfire, special X Rise Hill, X Rise Hill, get node, node, special effect, effect. You still get detonator and you have three cards. You're not beating a detonator. Does that make sense? Do not hand trap the main deck monsters. I cannot stress this enough. Save your hand traps for duo drive. Duo drive. Now, here's what's gonna happen if you negate the dual drive. Let's say you have three hand traps, okay? You use your Veiler on duo drive. There's an extremely high chance that they have Cold Blind or a Crossout Designator. That's why I said four. Or you can have real balls like myself and play no hand traps while other losers play four. Anyways, if you Veiler the dual drive, I don't see why you wouldn't want to go so great, but let's say you Veiler it. This is a total random, like Ash is a good example as well. Let's get Veiler and Ash. Ash the effect to add. Do not Veiler at first. This is very big. This is the second point. Because if they cross a density or cold by you, and this is not just my opponent of 100 mirror, but I've dueled, there's a few opponents, I didn't duel one person 100 times. That would require two people not to have a life. I'm the only one without a life. There was many duels in mirror matches, totaled 100 against different decks. Everyone is siding or maining cross out in that deck. Everybody. If you don't, you're behind. Or you're not playing high traps. So, I played hand traps too in that matchup to make it very equal because everyone will play it cookie cutter lists. So, hear this in, ready? If you have Ash and Baylor, always Ash the dual drive. Don't Baylor it. Because then, if they cross out, you can't chain Ash to cross out. So, if they cross out the Ash, you then chain link four Baylor. Dual drive effect, chain link one, chain link two Ash. The opponent cross out, chain link three, four cold by, chain link four Baylor. 
So that's where you save your hand traps. Have two hand traps in mind for dual drive. Because if dual drive doesn't resolve, they will not have the field spell, they will not have shit. And then they need to get rid of basically the rest of their hand, half the rest of their hand. Like most of their hand will be gone to then go into the next. And it's going to be node if they hard draw, it's, it's tough. And then that's the, when the node uses the effect at that point, that's if you have a third hand trap, that's when you use it. If you have imperm, save your imperm. Save your, this is now tip three. Save your imperm for your turn, if possible. If it's your only hand trap and they go dual drive, you always must be wary across the designator. It's pull side deck especially, mainly pull side deck. But if it's game one and you just have imperm, like I guess you could do it, but if it's pull side deck across the designator, you save your one imperm if possible for the detonator. Literally, when detonator gets stopped, you like you can play freely. Tip number four, the field spell is your best friend. The field spell is not as broken as other field spells before where it's like uh, plus seven field spell cards. You know, it's not like, it doesn't plus you anything. However, when I hard draw the field spell, my route changes entirely of the combo. So the typical combo line is you go dual drive first. If dual drive resolves, you go detonator and you actually have materials in the graveyard to draw. If many times your dual drive will get hand trapped, assume your dual, just assume your dual drive getting hand trapped, okay? If it gets hand trapped and you hard draw the field spell, then it's a little difficult. But if you hard draw the field spell and they're saving their hand traps for, for dual drive, you never start with dual drive. You activate the field spell, one of your two low forces field, and you go detonator. You go detonator first. You can see that combo line there. They don't teach you this in class. If you hard draw the field spell you and you have two low fours on the field, and obviously you could, if you have two low fours on the field, you have four more level fours on the field from your hand. Does that make sense, guys? You go detonator, attach. Now you can negate the, their hand trap that stops your dual drive that they've been saving. And then you summon your two level fours and then you go dual drive effect and then it's protected through the field spell. The fifth tip here is X Ryzeal is your best friend going second. Utilize an aggregator accordingly. Because you're most likely to be 18 hand traps as most cookie cutter lists are, their dual drive is, will never resolve. You will never allow their dual drive to resolve. Hence, they won't have the field spell. Because you're playing 18 hand traps and they don't have the field spell, if you're able to barn fire X Ryzeal or start with X Ryzeal or prosperity into X Ryzeal, you have seven ways to X Ryzeal. Do that as your first play immediately. Use X Ryzeal going second as your first play. Your 18 hand traps will make sure they don't have the field spell up. So the field spell cannot negate aggregator resolution. So use the aggregator, that's the rank nine that you sent to the graveyard with XYZ, to negate the Paguska or the detonator, the most likely detonator that they have immediately. Now, most likely in that scenario, they're gonna do something like, all right, uh, detonator, chain mailer, something like that. You just got rid of all the, one card, got rid of their whole detonator and a hand trap. And then you just go, okay, I saw XYZ, I'll rise you later, bozo. Then you win. Tip number six. Now for tip number six, you have to recognize that the board is fragile. Ryzeal is not like some crazy Scareclaw Manadium summon 47 times in one turn. I end on 90 gates, Pendulum, 3 Electro, my deck. That's a very weird description of a combo deck. It, it's not a crazy, absurd, it's extremely fragile. It ends on Detonator, Duo Drive, Field Spell, Pass. It loses to Imperm, it loses to Talent, it loses to Thrust, it loses to Engage, it loses to Widow Anchor. Shout out my beloved Sky Circle Mobilize Engage. It loses to Imperm. It loses to Enemy Controller. It loses to Karikara. Everything. Dialama. It loses to Dual Knight. It loses to, to Trip Game. It loses to Sam. It loses to Good Lighting. It loses to Cameras. It loses to Tripods. It loses to anything. Uh, 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 you'll blow a little bit and then it'll fall off the map. Bro, it loses to... It's very fragile. It's one monster on the field. Any defensive card in the game going second immediately stops it. Hence, you must be aware of that. Try to dig through the deck as far as board. If you're playing a, a cookie cutter list of field spell, detonator, hand traps, it's good. Try to dig for the good hand trap of Dugaris. So tip six is leverage Dugaris if you're playing a basic list. If you're playing your, your 18 hand trap, you know, average list, you know, good list for sure. It's a great, great deck. Rather than going duo drive, detonator, pass, go duo drive. Sometimes they even like to start with Dugaris. Because if I start with Dugaris, they're more likely to hand trap Dugaris. And then you go Duo Drive. And then you go Detonator. If that makes sense. If it's possible for your hand. Because there's eight level fours in the deck that summon. Bro, you could get six of them on the field extremely easily. So view your dual drive is getting hand trapped. Just expect for expect to getting hand trapped. So your graveyard will not be have enough for your field spell for one. And it won't have enough for Dugaris or no rise yield. So Dugaris effect fills the graveyard, which is very good for 
many reasons, uh, whether it's the field spell, whether it's no rise, your special summoning, it fills the graveyard for that. So feel free to use the guards a lot and they'll get rid of your Mulcharmy, it'll get rid of double hand traps you might have, it'll get rid of an extra card. Uh, so that's tip number six. Leverage the Garus. Now tip number seven, always end your turn with at least one follow-up. Always end your turn, just one or more, but always end with at least one card in your hand. Field spell draw does not count as follow-up. Always end with, assuming you're Dugaris, you're going Dugaris, so you're gonna you draw, you can't draw on the following turn. And the four cards you have left in your hand, it could be, don't like, don't small world, you're only follow-up away. Does that make sense? That's a huge tip. Always, under any circumstances, make sure that if your opponent outs the board, which is likely, you have at least one play. Because the most likely scenario thing that will happen is your opponent will, will use every single card in their hand, all like the six of the eight level four to hit the field, to clear almost your entire board. You'll probably end on one detonator without materials. So you want to have at least one follow-up, preferably having a second, but at least one. Because if your follow-up then gets Valor or Ash, you're at least able to play and you auto win. You can auto win uh, and most of the times they're gonna use every single card in their in their hand uh, in the mirror match especially. And the mirror match is the only thing you should maybe worry about because when you hit top gun that time it's all you're gonna play. But uh, make sure to have at least one follow-up. That's tip number seven. Tip number eight, do not use Star Liege right for shit card. A lot of the, uh, decks and a lot of people will go into Star Liege. I'll tell you why this card sucks. What this card, what the effect of Star Leech rank four does is any monster with 2,000 attack or more cannot be targeted or destroyed. That means your dual drive resolves. That means your detonator can be targeted. It's pretty good, right? This is why you cannot use that card. Everyone is going to be playing Ash and Nid. So if you, let the only, like, let's say, think of your hand right now. You summon Star Leech on the field. So that's normal summon Ice Rise Heal, Ice Rise Heal, Special Summon, Thold Rise Heal, Special Summon, at X Rise Yield Special Summon, you used all your special summons. The only card left is Node Rise Yield and Quick Play Spell. So the only ones left is Node Rise Yield and Quick Play Spell, okay? So you have two rank fours in the field. One is the Star Leech rank four, another rank four is Dual Drive. This is the average play if you guys are familiar with it. When you activate Dual Drive Effect, cool, you can remove from Star Leech. If they have a singular Ash Blossom or a singular Nibiru, which is six cards, the other two cards in your hand, one Hand Trap! stops your entire turn. No Rise Hill cannot summon because there's no card in the graveyard. In order to resolve the dual drive effect, it needs to detach. You, you're not able to detach from, from Fol the rank four Photon Galaxy card. You're not able to detach from dual drive. So your node and plugin, if you have it in hand, simply cannot resolve. You lose. You, you insta lose to one Ash or one Nibiru. Instantly. Let's say you're then able to special, like on top of all those four starters that you have, you're also able to uh, draw an extra Ice Rise Heal. So you're discarding a card, you're sending your card, and then you're gonna special something. Then, you, then what? Then they're gonna get Imperm when you go to Road Rise Effect. And then you have no cards, nothing. You have to get rid of a hand trap. A one Ash, one Nibiru stops the whole thing. Do not go into the rank four Star Leash card. It's not good. It, it's really not good. Tip number nine. I'm assuming you're gonna be playing the average list of 18 hand traps. A uh, few started, maybe you wanna play some other cards. Maybe you wanna play the trap card. Maybe you wanna play 20 hand traps. Maybe you wanna play talents. The deck bricks. The deck, I uh, 100 matches, I would, no. The deck bricks. You need to play three pots and three small world. Like, you don't play as many starters as possible. There's no seven deck card. The deck bricks. So if you're playing your nine starters of the nine monsters, you're playing three bonfire, that's 12. Let's say you're playing Pot of Prosperity, that's 13. Let's say you're playing Small World 2, which is a neg, that's 16. It's not a lot, bro. That's actually not, like, I, I know it seems like a lot. That's 16 starters and extenders. There's gonna be many hands where you just draw one. Small World's a neg one, by the way. So some people are not even gonna play Small World. Let's see, play, I'll play as many humanly possible. I still think there needs to be some other engine involved, like a 10, like a five card extender engine until seven attack round comes out. Like Small World, the deck breaks. So my tip number nine is, if you're gonna play the cookie gutter list of 18 hand traps, Play three small world, play three pot of desires. Play 19 starters, not 16. 16 is the bare minimum. If you're not playing small world or pot of desires, and you're just, let's say you want to play just, just desires, that's 15 starters. You have the nine monsters, you have three bonfire, that's 12 and three desires, it's 15. That's still not enough. I know it seems like it's enough. It's not, it's actually not. Especially post side, uh, going second, especially going second. And if you're substituting them for hand traps, you're gonna have too many scenarios where uh, your opponent will know if you brick. If you do not start, with Ice Rise Yield, I'll give you start with Small World. Clearly, that's your only play. If you start with Desires, clearly that's your only play. So you like the second you summon one card, that's when it's getting hand trapped. 
I said never main deck, uh, uh, never hatch up a main deck monster in the deck. Only when they start with desires or small world. Clearly, you break. No one is starting with desires unless you break. You get what I'm saying? Like uh, turn zero, turn zero is different going second because that's like a bait. But turn zero, no one is starting with desires. You're not gonna risk losing your uh, one of cards that are vital, like your node, your plugin, your field spell, your trap if you're playing it. So. What I'm trying to get at here is play as many starters as possible. So that's tip number nine. Play as many, many, many extenders and starters as humanly possible. My recommendation is if you're playing the hatch out, play three small or play three pot of desires. And post side deck, uh, if you're going second, you have six small charmies to draw into more. And that leads to tip number 10, which is the last one. Well, charmies is the best hand trap of the deck because it's level four. There will be some of my game states where you go special node rise, like going second, uh, going first through uh, infinity hand traps special throw rise a special x rise deal bonfire special x rise that gets hand trapped or gets interrupted with and you don't ha you don't have a way to ice rise deal and you normal summon a mo charmy it's a level four it does come up speaking of which the extra deck should have typhon in it i know it's simplified but if you're playing 18 hand traps and you're playing the 18 starters and there will be the hand trap battle will come down to a point sometimes where they're only like they have one detonator on the field and you're left with like nothing they have nothing you just normal summon one card typhon bounce attack it does come up because that is 3,000 attack. Make sure there's space for Typhon in there. Uh, Typhon does conflict with the whole deck. Typhon does conflict with the deck because it's not a rank four. But there'll be many scenarios where you don't even have a starter. You don't have nothing. And you're clearly not outing a detonator. So just Typhon bounce. Your dual drive not resolved. The field spells on the field. You have hand trap battle. They're not resolving dual drive. They just somehow got two level fours. They have like one card in hand. Typhon bounce. They can only get Valor or Imperm in that scenario. Not Nibbed or Ashed or Ogred or whatever attack and then it becomes a great battle after that the boat that was bonus tip one bonus tip two x rise is the only one that has a effect where it's not able to add with a nibiru token or nibiru monster so if you get nibiru to get a token or if you nibiru them you need to understand your x rise will not be added don't forget that it's very vital your opponent will also not know that it's a new deck so if your opponent tries to add up x rise if they nibiru you check them and make sure they don't recognize it this is why Nibiru is amazing in this deck. You could make it so your opponent is not able to x rise you at all, and they're gonna lose the search for nothing. It does come up. This is why you need bonus tip three. Put Donner in the extra deck. You need one Donner if you're playing Nibiru. Also, if you get the uh, token, because it's different types of shit from everything. So make sure to play the Donner to get rid of the Nibiru slash token. Another side tip is if you're, I don't like the trap card. I, I, it's win more going first, it's useless going second. It's win more, it's, seriously. I'd much rather a call bar or cross out, a desires, a prosperity. I wanna play a small world. It's not that good. At that point, I would prefer to just play Refle the trap, Reflesia trap, the Grave Digger trap, to play around hand traps, which I think is way better than the Ranzo trap. So my tip is don't, don't play it. But when you said four, if you don't listen to the Pen God, you're gonna play it anyways. When it's in the graveyard and it's battle phase and you're going for a game, a plug in when you activate it could attach the trap card to the uh, uh, detonator on the field. So if you're entering, let's say you enter battle, you have dual drive and you have detonator, as example. All right, your dual drive has, like you're going second. A lot of the times the dual drive and detonator will have no materials on them. You hear what I'm saying? They'll have no materials because you, you, you just wasted your whole hand to get rid of all the materials, they used all the effects. Uh, they draw, they have no follow up, enter battle phase. Attack with dual drive at 2,500. Attack with detonator, that's 3,000, that's 5,500. In the battle phase, because an XYZ monster battle, you could banish the trap uh, card from the graveyard to special Zeus in the battle phase via the trap. Because the XYZ monster officially battled this turn, so you're able in the battle phase to banish the trap and special Zeus in the battle phase. So then if you attack, it's 8,500 damage. So you could kill them. So that's a random thing to note if you're playing the trap to leverage it. Same with uh, bonus tip five, I never saw the value in the rank four that gets summoned itself by discarding a spell or trap. It's extremely good. It's extremely good. Lowering all the monsters the opponent has by 500 uh, automatically helps you clear around the board very easily. And uh, very important if you're playing voiceless voice because the guy's 4,000 attack, it makes it instantly go back to 2,000 by negating everything. And it's a, tr a free card. You can put it on top of Dugaris to go for game and attacks twice. It's a pretty good card. Last random tip is uh, subscribe for more. Thanks. See you guys in the next video. Peace. If you're playing board breakers, not many people will, but I will because I like to see the opponents look in the eye when I obliterate their board without a hand trap. It's very fun and rewarding. And that's also how I grew this beard and these biceps.
concept, okay, that does not do it justice. That, the, these look pretty small in this lighting. But what's not small is my uh, will to win. 